Welcome to the Lion Rock Weekly Show. Today we just kind of uh, switch to the English channel because we are very happy to have our intern Stephen with me. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, uh, Stephen, could you please kind of um, briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Stephen. I'm a citizen of Zimbabwe, Belgium, and Australia. I'm currently studying economics at the University of Western Australia, and I'm here in Hong Kong to intern. At the Lion Rock Institute, as well as study at the University of Hong Kong. Yeah, how do you find Lion Rock and Hong Kong as your internship? Great, and no, I've I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, been quite the experience learning Hong Kong, my first time in Asia, and yeah, I'm enjoying Lion Rock Institute. So this is your first time to Asia. Yes, yes, yes. It is. But uh, I heard of your background. You have been to man. You have been living in many countries. Yeah. So I was um, raised in Zimbabwe. I lived 15 years. In the capital Harare, mm -hmm. and then after that, I lived four years in Perth, and I've studied one year in Brussels as well. Yeah. Before coming to Hong Kong, have you heard of Hong Kong? Because um, uh, we claim ourselves as international city, but when I go to UK or US, people people tell me Hong Kong is a part of Japan, something like that. Yeah, no, I've I've heard that one before as well. I think. Um, I was fortunate enough to learn a bit about Hong Kong history as well as Chinese history in my final year of secondary school in Australia, and I found it quite interesting. Yeah, currently Hong Kong is kind of uh, a spotlight of the news cycle of uh, of the international news. Have you heard of something uh, like the march or the uh, protests of Hong Kong before yeah. coming to Hong Kong? Yeah, no. In the last month, it's been well covered by the Australian media as well as the other international medias that we get in Australia. So I heard quite a few about it and I talk about it with my friends. Yeah, that's great. And um, um, let's go, go, go back to the topic I want to discuss because I heard you, you, you came from Zimbabwe, yeah. the place that we only study in and, and read the news from books. But, uh, and we also have our Zimbabwe currency in our office. But, uh, in this in this institute, we have never used this uh, currency. But you, the real person who really used this, how much is this? That this is, is trillion. One hundred trillion. One hundred trillion dollars. How how was how how is this in in Zimbabwe? In Zimbabwe, that was the, the one of the biggest notes we had, and that's what we used around the two thousand eight two thousand and nine period. Um, how much can I get for one hundred? trillion Zimbabwean dollar? Well, I mean, at the, at the, and now it's worthless, but at the time... Worthless? Worthless, I mean, since... Not that, even a, a piece of bread or anything? I mean, now it isn't because the currency is illegitimate, that okay. specific, specific note, but back in the day, that was probably as much as a bus fare, probably a bit less. A bit less. So, how... Could you show me your wallet or what, what would you, you bring... bring to uh, how do you carry your your dollars to 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 the shops or anything often enough bank withdrawals or simply buying a loaf of bread at the shops would be done with a bag and depending on how much you're buying from the shops that determined how big your bag was i've seen people going with baskets to the shops or many baskets to carry the many notes that they had to pay for with this kind of amount of money how do the shopkeepers uh, calculate how much uh, exactly the, the thing worth? I think it was quite subjective at the time. I think um, each shop had different interpretations of what the currency was worth as it was often changing on almost daily basis. Yes, so in city to city it's quite different. Uh, yeah, it was quite different um, and depending on how they kept up with their interpretation of the inflation and because I don't think the government had a very good record of it themselves. Mm -hmm. If you buy like a, a piece of bread in the morning is it the same amount of cash you need to pay or is different already in the afternoon? I mean, it could be different and there were instances where on a tr trip I'd go from one city to another and 100 trillion dollars that you have in your hand there may buy you a loaf of bread in one city in the morning and the afternoon when you arrive at another one, they may have a different interpretation and that bank note may initially have bought you a loaf of bread but now only buys you maybe a few lollies or a few sweets. Mm -hmm. I heard you um, talked about uh, 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 a joke earlier this morning about the basket and the, the cash. Yeah. How was it in Zimbabwe? Yeah, that's a, that's a common joke among Zimbabweans is that of one where there's someone who went to the shops and they go with a basket of money to pay for their loaf of bread. And as I've said before, a bag of money just for one loaf of bread and they turn around to look at the stack of magazines on the side when they turn around 
the money's there, but the basket's gone because the basket is worth more than the money. <laughs> the basket is more valuable. Yeah.